Hello and welcome back to The Future of Photography. I'm Chris Marquardt. And as you can see, if you're watching the video, everyone's here. Adrian, Imar, and Jeremiah. Good evening, everyone. Jeremiah. Good morning. Good, good, good morning. Or late morning. Yeah. Good evening. Late morning. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I have to check. <laughs> we're back. Um, the entire crew is back. And uh, of course, uh, we have another interesting topic for you. Uh, Before... Before we get into the topic, I want to point you to something. You can see this here on the screen on the left hand side. Um, we have a new community home. It's a Discord. If you never heard of it, it's like a closed forum kind of thing uh, or a closed chat with multiple channels and stuff. It's easy once you're in there. And getting in there is also easy because we have an invitation. And the invitation is tfttf.com slash join tfop. We'll put the link in the show notes, but uh, if you're watching the video, you can see it. And it's uh, it's our new community home. That's where you get to interact. That's where you get to ask questions. That's where you get to influence what we do here on the show. There's channels where you can suggest topics. There's, um, there's us on there. This is actually the place where we also plan future episodes. So uh, you can become part of that. And um, I think that's pretty awesome. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, don't be afraid to criticize us. It, it will hurt our feelings <laughs> a lot, but if that's okay with you, go ahead. No, Maybe some of us don't publish our art as publicly as you, Jeremiah. I might be a bit more sensitive to criticism on the internet than you are. <laughs> you get used to it as a director. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah, so yeah, the Discord is, I'll, I'll leave the link up on the video. So if you're watching the video, if all the time in the world to join us there and say hi, and we'll say hi back to you. Yeah, absolutely. We've already had the first few joiners come in. Um, I'm enjoying playing with it as well. So it's uh, it's good. It's, it's good. good. And, and it's, it, 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 is, it is awesome. You can even talk to each other if you want to, like with mm. voice and with video and stuff. So, um, And it's only for us. There's no strangers mm. in there. It's only <laughs> the C-Pop community. <laughs> oh, you know, some, sometimes people are a bit, a bit careful with these public things but that's not absolutely a public thing so, so they should be don't be shy join us and uh we'll we'll welcome you with open arms so today's topic is um about self-love what exactly do you mean by that <laughs> Imar? give us give well, us a bit of hang on let's give it let's give if Imo a chance that would that that yeah, was my no clickbait <laughs> right. title for the show that's it not actually clickbait. what the show is about <laughs> <Just> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Imar, take it away. Uh oh. Uh, so I found this in the ideas, one of the ideas uh, bins that we have. Um, I'm not very good at putting ideas into it, but I, I like to spark off things that I see from the rest of you. So somebody had mentioned selfies, and I noticed that in the last nerd, I mean, uh, sorry, nerf episode that you um, <laughs> talked about mentioned about selfies up. So I thought it would be maybe some kind of a progression from the last one. And um, so. So selfies are a math. I'm going to read you the definition of what a selfie is because I needed to look this up for myself. So a selfie is a self-portrait digital photograph typically typically taken with a digital camera or a smartphone, which may be held in the hand or supported by a selfie stick. Selfies are often shared on social media via social networking services such as Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram and all the rest of them. So the definition seems to imply that what makes a selfie a selfie is that you share it. I don't know how oh. true that is, but can I well, can I ask a simple question yeah. pursuant to that? Is it a selfie if you shoot it on film? And I'm getting to something. That's there's a question yeah. behind the question, or do you have to take the selfie and look at it right away to make sure that it's right? I imagine. Uh. I imagine it's. It's exactly the same thing. A selfie is still a selfie. In I, my I mind, think so. No matter what you I, take I, it on. I, ha I, again, I think a film camera makes it work as well because um, I, mm. one of my very earliest memories of selfies of, or selfie culture is the film Thelma and Louise. Um, and yeah. I was, I, I don't know what it was, but there were, there, there were quite a few girls that I knew around about the time that film came out who suddenly got really into, you know, using their little <laughs> snapshot Thelma film Louise. cameras to take a Thelma and Louise shot. It wasn't yeah. called a selfie in, in that in those days. Yeah. It was called a Thelma and Louise shot. <laughs> well wouldn't you it say was something that you shooting definitely shooting did film? if you were off on a road trip. Absolutely. Oh yeah, but or wouldn't festivals that be or whatever. A, I think what I'm asking is, is there a difference between a selfie and a self portrait? 
Now this is now you're getting right into the nub of the matter, Jeremiah, I have to say, because that is my very question. When does a selfie become a self portrait? Because self portraits have been with us since forever. Forever. And good, good question. I think all artists um, at some point in their lives have ventured down that road or do it periodically just as I don't even know as a way to say I'm here. Hello, it's me, you know. Um, so it's I'd take another a stab rabbit at hole. that. I'd say a mm. selfie is is really about a presentation uh, of an illusion of self uh, designed to uh, get applause or significance on social media to live mm. up to some standard of a lifestyle. Of, but a self portrait mm. is more of an investigation of who you are and what you are. I mean, we can go back to the genius of Rembrandt or earlier and earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, commissioned portraits, which are, I mean, sculpted portraits in Rome or Greece even, um, that really are about, um, I, I think more about creating an iconic version of oneself or just an exploration uh, um, of a cheap model um, for a lot of them, Van Gogh, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the intention is different. I think you're right on the intent. I think the <laughs> yeah. intention is different. I think, yeah. um, but but I, it, it's I'm I'm charmed uh, mm -hmm. uh, by the by the way you've chosen to uh, a deep philosophical de uh, definition of a, <laughs> uh, of a selfie. Um, <laughs> For me, there's a lot to do with the fish face. And before we finish this, given that we do have a video recording, I think we'd all got to give the list of the viewers, I should say, for that. There you go. Here's the Easter egg for people to actually click on the YouTube link. Oh, you, you, mean, you, mean, egg. you mean the duck face? The well, in the, in the UK, it's Is it called, called fish, fish face, face in, in the UK. Fish face. Yeah, yeah. yeah fish right. face in the UK. Oh, okay. But uh, <laughs> I, I'd be in the duck face category. You know, I think, yeah. That's the one I'd be familiar with hearing about. I, I think this is a duck it's face. People making careers one, out of that. Know? <laughs> so so for me for me that selfie thing is some has has something to do with the um availability of or the easy easy availability of photography and the, the reason i say that is because today i mean we have cameras we can shoot as many pictures as we like but there was a time where that was not really that easily possible because you had cost and film and stuff mm. and i remember Ah, must have been 17, 18. And a friend of mine was working for a marketing firm um, and they were advertising Sega uh, gaming consoles. So he was he was together with someone else. He was out in places wearing a Sonic the Hedgehog costume nice. while the other guy was taking photos of kids with Sonic the Hedgehog and those photos were Polaroids. So what they sent him is five huge boxes of Polaroid film. I mean, that was a buttload of money. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he yeah. had this, they had this vehicle and the, the whole, the whole trunk was full of Polaroid pictures and, but he never used all of them. So he kept like a whole box for himself. And um, <laughs> so a, a while later, um, we ended up using them for like anything, like we use our our smartphones today. We were just shooting insignificant stuff without any remorse, and a lot <laughs> of those were click selfies. Um, mm. That was in the in the early nineties, probably. So far, far uh, ahead of when you would call them selfies, but they did feel a bit insignificant. Because mm -hmm. we were not doing this in an, any artful fashion or in any uh, with any any um, intention of making it something that is significant. So, so that goes back to Jeremiah's thing, doesn't it? About the intention is different because what, so it sounds yeah. like you've you've got no investment there. You weren't trying to make mm -hmm. a great photo. You, you had no financial cost of of making the photo. Mm -hmm. There was the yeah. So it, it's. Uh, it, that that's that's an interesting one because I, I i've done some self-portraits actually i've done some self-portraits in the last couple of years using instant film and generally speaking it takes me about a pack of film 10 shots to <laughs> to get the lighting composition etc all right the way that i'd like it um 
Uh, and sometimes it takes me 10 shots, even if I've got a digital camera to do the practicing with. <laughs> um, and uh, But there's an investment there. And, I, and I'm not particularly talking about the financial investment, um, but there's an investment of time and intent and... Uh, uh, yeah, time and intent and work to working in progress towards a particular outcome that you have in mind. So I see a very dark side uh, to selfies, especially for women. I, I, I just feel that there is a um, kind of a socially competitive um, thing that's going on and it has to do with body shaming. It has to do mm. with with uh, social castes, um, mm. race. Um, context um, that can be very um, hurtful, harmful, and 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 make uh, people feel that their lives are 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 not worth it, are are not as good as all those wonderful people having such a wonderful life, doing all those wonderful things, um, and the constant uh, kind of subjugation to the fantasy self-portrait. I'm going to call them. Mm. Um, just I, I I think creates a a, um, a hardship for some. Um, for others, it's just a memory. Instead of saying, "Oh, do you mind taking our picture or my picture here in front of the Eiffel Tower, whatever it is," provided it's during the day and not at night. No copyright <laughs> infringement here. <laughs> Refer back to our, our other. <laughs> but 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 uh, it, just in terms of of the presentation, I'm going to take it, I'm going to post it on my site, I'm going to post it on Insta, Facebook, etc. Um, I feel th this is and and pursuant to us talking about the future of photography, the future of the subjective image, uh, and what that does culturally, Emer. I think you're very right in saying that. And actually, just before we did this, I, I took a couple of minutes and I just clicked on the hashtag selfie on Instagram. And Oh, what I found was predominantly absolutely gorgeous looking Asian girls all trying to look the same, mm. which is and they they're, they all look perfect. Uh, but it's sad, you know, that, that yes. they're what they're what are they trying to prove or who is it for? That's ultimately it, you know, and I, I think when you say that a self portrait and a selfie are different, I totally agree with you there because the self portrait definitely involves more thought. And then like, I mean, I don't know about the rest of you, but like who really wants to look at their own face? <laughs> you know, it's difficult enough to look in the mirror to, you know, and we all it's see all the flaws this. that we have, <laughs> you know, <It's> a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Face for radio. What am I going to say? Um, but like, I think it's very sad and like people like I'm, I'm older, I'm a middle aged woman. So it, it, selfie culture was really before my time. So I didn't have the pressure of that when I was growing up. Now I was a, my self esteem was rubbish when I was a teenager. It's, you know, it's something I'm working on all the way through my life. Um, so I don't know what that would have done to me mentally as a teenager if, if I was engaged with all these perfect people all the time because um it's it's I mean, just quite compare, dangerous com yeah compare those asian images mm. to you know the classic self portrait um by van gogh mm. or the many by rembrandt um i, I think that um when you look at those self portraits and i you know one day i'll 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 show you what i have just to my left, I, I have a, a self-portrait by Rembrandt, an etching, so please don't come and steal it. <laughs> um, uh, but it's, you know, it, it, it's it's an etching, it's a plate, it was kind of reprinted, I think, in 1630, and I think. Um, but the, the kind of warts and all mm. um, description of his own face, I mean, he, yeah. he was hiding nothing, he was aging at that point, and there was nothing... Um, presentational about a, a, a heroic look it was mm. very very warts and all well if i can take and that just to a woman for a minute like the likes of frida like that you've mentioned in your um is mentioned in your pick of the week um she to, like 
was huge to me, her self-portraits. Um, with that sort of warts and all, I am who I am. Here's my moustache and, you know, here's my unibrow. And take me if you like me and if you don't, then don't. Like all her experiences, pain, sorrow, everything was painted into that portrait. And it wasn't just about her look. It was about so, so much more. Um, so what is the, what is, and, and, and the, I'll shut up in a second, yeah. but, but what is the motivation that drives millions of people to take idealized photographs of themselves to post on social media? Well, I think, I think one thing is that they have control over them. You, yeah. you can make a selfie into what you want it to be because you don't have to upload every selfie. You can, you can take 500 and find the right one and edit it. And there's, I mean, today with all those filters and uh, things, there's live editing going on. So whatever we see, even on a video, uh, could be something completely different in reality. So that control is, is a projection of how people want to be seen. And they have the tools today to do that. And that's something that I love to do, actually. And I do regularly enough now. I don't post them often. I, I post them on my Flickr, but I don't post them. I don't post them for likes. I post them as part of my diary, say, you know, um, and I love doing those. And I love the fact that I can you know, if you're having a crap day, you're on your period, you're feeling fat, and then you take a picture of yourself and you edit it and you turn it into something else. Even that look that you've got in your face that says, oh, I hate my life, can become something else, you know, with a, a bit of tweaking and just playing about. So it makes me feel better. My shallow little ego that, that, that <laughs> likes it sometimes. Do you think that advertising um, and, and editorial fashion photography. Um, Look, I don't really engage an awful. Yeah, I don't engage an awful lot with that type of stuff, and I kind of understand the shallowness of it all. But I think any woman in the world, I defy any woman in the world to not be affected by that crap. You know, yeah. it's really there's only so much of it you can take, and even when you don't engage with it, you're still confronted with it everywhere that you go um, down to you, the young girls on this. I, I don't know what it's like in, I presume it, it's all stems from some, I don't know, maybe it comes from the States. I don't know, but this, this look that all these teenage girls have this same look with these eyebrows, this tans, it's like a uniform. And like, they don't seem to understand that, like, where's your uniqueness in this? Like, where is your individuality? You're all trying to look like each other and this it's bland, you know? Is Do you it, think it, that it should, we should start a new, <laughs> sorry. It's, it uh, sounds start like a, Wait a second, start a new uh, movement of non-idealized selfies, like people <laughs> looking at their worst. <laughs> Well, I think that there's uh, uh, this is it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because uh, you know what what Ema, if I've understood you correctly, what you're saying is that it it is that to 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 take an image like that and make yourself look better is is a somewhat positive experience, at least in in the in the short term, makes you feel or better. Or make yourself a, look worse, or you know, emphasize the big frowny lines on your face, or whatever it is. You know, it's 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 saying yeah. something, and it is sort of. I suppose like heavily edited, a picture that's heavily, heavily edited is like almost like a bit of a mask and you don't, you know, it's not your true self, but it's, it's some sort of persona or, you know, um, it's more, it's very stylized. I like to do things like that often, but there's a bit of a dilemma there, isn't it? Or, a, there really or maybe, is. a, maybe even a dichotomy, which is that, you know, what might, might be an activity that at least for you personally makes you feel a bit better. Um, is is contributing to a global ish, thing, which is which can have um, a lot of negative mental health effects. So, so it might be positive for you in your mental health uh, in in the short term, but overall globally, ne uh, you know, contributing you to a that, negative thing. And that's where I think the the fuzzy line is because, well, the fuzzy line. I don't. I wouldn't consider what I would do would do with my own pictures as selfies afterwards. You know. So you're you're talking self portraits now. 
I kind of am. It's something I've always been a bit interested in, but um, I, I, they're not really for anybody else. They're more or less for me. And actually, I am. Um, I was looking at Vivian Meyer, mm-hmm. um, earlier her self portraits, and um, actually when I went back through my own just curiosity, I I realized that I do that a lot. Like I use a mirror. Or I'll I'll take a window reflection or the screen that I'm sitting in front of or, you know, a table, a part of a something chrome or a tap even like I've I've actually done that quite a bit. So, so I completely get where she was coming from. Let's let's extrapolate, because one thing that Vivian yeah. Meyer never intended is for her pu- photos to be published. Yes, of course. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so those photos being found and uh, being shown everywhere after her death. Um, how do you feel about that? How would you feel if someone would find your photos in 80 years and would uh, put them on the whatever the equivalent of the Internet is just then? I think it's amazing. I think okay. that 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 lady had a like almost like, I suppose, some sort of double life <laughs> in one way that like she had a day yeah. job that she very much I'm all that film and everything built up because she probably didn't have the means to and she didn't as it turned out did she at towards the end of her life she was very had to be looked after and like her story is quite sad really and it's maybe she would have printed them and shown them had she lived in a different world with you know more means and just more opportunity but obviously when she took those self-portraits the defiance kind of on her face she's such a She's got such a characterful face that you can really see the human, you know, the strength of the woman sort of in in these pictures. But she didn't do them directly to the camera that is it's I don't know, is there there's some kind of weird thing with vanity that if you take a picture of yourself, especially as a woman, you're you're just some vain narcissist Mm. Uh, and like her photos. They don't, you know, that's not the reason why she's doing them. That's not the reason why all women would want to photograph themselves. I actually found some fascinating people in delving into this um, that are more in the self portraiture line than the selfie line. But like the the line is kind of blurry because of the tools we have now, you know, like obviously if you just because you take it with the camera, it's a self portrait. But if you take it with the phone, it's it's a selfie. Is that right? Because as we've been talking, an idea has so. occurred to me in, in that um, uh, I think one of the things I've, I, I've always considered, um, and, and uh, certainly it's, it's, um, it's an, an idea that resonates rather than my own idea, um, it, is that a portrait would tell you or teach you or communicate to you something about the subject. And the selfie culture seems to me to be almost the exact opposite which is that mm. it's designed to disguise uh or 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 i, I mean not necessarily an outright uh, outright lie but mm. po- uh, but at least a very positive exaggeration of the truth and that they almost seem to be going in opposite directions so i for, for me it's less about the 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 technology um uh, and more about and uh, more about the intent yeah, yeah I guess, intention you know, is all. Sorry. Um, I, in, in the course of um, looking up some stuff for this, I was kind of watching some stuff about how, like, even the most famous, beautiful women in the world get their bodies and faces photoshopped f- for the front covers of magazines. Like, they're not gorgeous enough already that somebody has to step in there and try and make them even more so. But like it, to, the, to the nth degree so that it looks completely unnatural when you see the original picture beside the photoshopped picture. And in, in most cases, the original picture is obviously that much nicer, you know, so it's coming from the top, top down, isn't it? This this attitude. So what what a poor teenager supposed to do about it? Only the only thing like I might would hope for in my optimistic way is that um like this selfie thing is, is kind of an in for them. And like, surely at some point you have to kind of question yourself and say, OK, what am I doing this for? Um, what does this mean? <laughs> um, and maybe 
delve a little deeper into your own, you know, the workings of your own mind and what's motivating you to do that. Like it's obviously people, people are lonely. They want love. I don't know. They just want acceptance and to be validated in some way. And for some reason, we think that um, by looking some kind of perfect that that validates us as human beings or something. Imer, do you think this is going to get worse or better as we move towards the future? I hope it's going to get better. I think, how would you that, know, how would that feel? How would that look? I think, well, I don't know. I can only speak in terms of I have a daughter um, who's just coming to kind of preteen age now. And I would be very, very concerned that she kind of shy away from that type of world for as long as is humanely possible. Um, but I, I do see in her and, well, her counterparts, um, they're very much individualistic in their. Um, now, I don't know if that's an age thing. Will this change when she hits the teenage years? I don't know. But um, at the moment, I can't imagine anybody sort of um, trying to dictate to her how she should look. Because even <laughs> when I try <laughs> to suggest things, uh, I don't get very far. So um, I it's it's going to be difficult, but um, I don't know. I, I think, you know, a lot of it rests on uh, parents and what we allow really impressionable kids to be exposed to and then what we talk to them about as well, I think. I um, like to think, my, my, my daughter's a little younger than yours, but I, I like to mm. think uh, that because it's an established thing i think the role of the parent is is very important uh, and to help the children and guide them through it i do worry about the, the generation that that sort of grew into this phase or craze or or fashion for selfies w without that guidance i mean yeah what i feel as a as a parent is that okay i know this is a thing uh, I, and it it's well documented what are some of the hazards of being yeah uh, especially mental health hazards so i have some uh, i have some awareness and i can maybe help guide um uh, the, but but the i suppose the the slice not not even really a whole generation but the the slice of, uh, of society that suddenly you know, experienced this for the first time with no guidance at all as it as it evolved um I, I i do think there's a worry about that so for me the i think i'd like to think the answer to jeremiah's question and unusually for me i'll be positive um, i like to think the answer to jeremiah's question is that now that we all are aware of of this phenomenon and and the the potential harm it can do that, that we can help guide our young uns through it all um uh, and that over uh, and that uh they they in their turn when they come to experience it can experience it in a more balanced and healthy way but but yeah you know, rarely do the positive things i like to think about ever come true <laughs> <laughs> there is a bit of a counter movement of sorts um, that I've seen and it runs under the hashtag Instagram reality. Um, it's all mix of things, but what you see is um, what you see is pictures that have side by side an Instagram selfie plus the original photo next to it. Some people put them up there themselves. Some people kind of get exposed by someone posting their next to their Instagram photo, a photo that they took of someone else. So it's a really interesting uh, thing to uh, to explore. Um, so it, it's not just that it is. Uh, there is one other side there as well. And I, th and I think if we if people can do that w without shame, without shaming others, uh, because there's there's a huge potential for yeah. bullying and, and shaming in that if, if people yeah. can, if 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 that can be made and maintained as a as a positive step, uh, then, then I think that that's a really good thing. I mean, I know that there especially are also if people voices. are honest and post these things themselves. I think that's what yes, really yes, what absolutely. really makes the difference here. Yeah, yeah, tough tough one to to work through though. It, it it's it is as a, as a parent, I'm I I worry about these things. I think we should worry about this as kind of just humans. In other words, what do we want our social um, presentations to be about 
illusions or do we want real acceptance and 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 kind of a, a, a coming together of very diverse looking sounding thinking mm -hmm. people to promote um, more diversity of thought more engagement in the world around us so um, I, th I think it's a it's it's a danger but it's also um, the kind of cultural phenomena that is being fed uh, by a tremendous amount of economic um, by a big economic engine uh, that is in all manner and not just for women for men too you know better hair better skin better body better diet better this better that you once you achieve this you will be closer to a a godlike human and and you know we know that the 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 internally the more we um separate the reality of our our real lives that we know instinctively consciously or not with an idealized presentation at some point the piper must be paid and often it's paid with self-harm with abuse um with alcoholism with overdoses i mean there, there's all kinds of manifestations of disconnect when one faces the fact that you don't have an idealized life um i think as artists um, what you want to do is use your abilities to look at the world visually or any other way that you choose and accept it and, and make it um, a celebration of the differences rather than the sameness. And I think if we can push to that with all our individual approaches to work and self portraits, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, there's there's nothing wrong uh, about taking a selfie. It's the intention of what you want to do with it. You know, are you trying to create a false narrative? Or are you trying to create a memory? Uh, or are you trying to discover something about yourself and your environment? Those are things that any person taking it is going to have unconsciously at least. So, not in there. Everybody up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at, at this point, I think I'll draw draw our listeners' attention to the fact that there, there's some some really interesting links in our show notes this week. Um, you know, to to uh, a, a TEDx talk, to some uh, to a, a Huff Post article that explores how um, artists are using selfies as a as a vehicle for change. So, so I would encourage everybody to have a look at the the show notes as well. We haven't got time to talk about all of them in depth, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, there, there's some good stuff there that presents different faces to the phenomenon that you might call. Mm -hmm. uh, what well, we do call selfies. And let me remind everyone: there's also our Discord because. If anyone now has the, let's say, the urge to discuss this more, that would be a good place to do it. It Perfect certainly would. It. Yes, okay. absolutely. Um, so I guess, yeah, we'll probably not, not be able to, to, to really close this topic. This is something that will be with us for a long time. Um, so let's just move on to the picks of the week. What do we have? Who wants to go first? I can go first if you like. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my pick of the week this week uh, is uh, hopefully going to be helpful. Um, we we're talking about selfies. Um, yeah, I'd say that 90 plus percent uh, selfies these days uh, are taken using smartphones. Um, and so my pick of the week is a website called nocamerabag.com, which is uh, a website that um uh, it, well i'd say it primarily it's a it's, a, it's an informational website about uh, how to take the best photos that you can uh, with your phone um, and i know there are lots and lots and lots of websites that do that and you can buy courses on youtube and all sorts of stuff but this one i just i, I kind of like the tone of this one it's it's not it's not too dense in in the sense that they're not posting for the sake of posting every uh, everything i've read on it it seems to have a bit of a purpose and something and some thought behind it so so go go check it out all right uh jeremiah how about you well, I'm going to draw uh, 
everyone's attention to 10 masters of the self-portrait. Um, it's uh, an article on artsy.net. Uh, it's posted there. And uh, it spans Albrecht Durer, Frida Kahlo, um, Barclay Hendricks, Van Gogh, uh, Cindy Sherman, of course, Pablo Picasso, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, Rembrandt. Uh, just to kind of dive in and and see what classic uh, self portraiture is like. Um, and you know the next the next one that I I thought would be interesting is a site that um, is rather unusual <laughs> in that it, it it's not quite selfies, but it could be the kind of selfie uh, that one would take and then manipulate uh, to make better. I don't want to say much more other than that. Just explore it. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it's humor. It's, it looks very humorous. Yes, it does. Very funny. Um, okay, Imar, how about how about yours? She can't hear us. She can't hear us. I I just no. She's lost you. I just cued her. Oh, we cannot <laughs> no, hear we, her either. Okay, we can't hear, no. something has broken, and it's not clear what has broken. Um, no, we can't hear you. Sorry, Imar. Um, let's let's yeah, let's cut here and fix this, <laughs> and then come back. How about that? Okay. Cut. We're back <laughs> with <laughs> the fixed issues, <laughs> and Imar and Adrian have swapped places in the video. <laughs> but that's just the way it is. Um, Imar, your pick of the week is next. What is it about? Okay. Uh, my pick of the week is kind of an Irish take on I found this on an Irish website, which is RTE, um, which is our news TV channel, um, you know, home TV channel. So um, there's a lot of interesting bits and pieces in here. So it's how selfies show what it means to be human in the 21st century. But just given what we were just talking about, um, there's an interesting talk um, from an Irish woman about young women narcissism and this selfie phenomenon. And it's quite interesting. I watched it earlier um, and among other things it's a good bit of a read so i don't know if we'll ever get to the um you know is it a bad thing is it a good thing it's like anything isn't it what well, it's how you use it so yeah. maybe it can lead to you know something good can come out but i don't know but yeah. uh, this is very interesting um it's a very interesting take on it anyway because we're all I saw a lot about actually millennials and um, the kind of sense of entitlement and all the things that go along. Oh, that they careful, say goes along careful with we're going to get emails now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> all the kind, that kind of thing that goes along with everyone's a winner and everybody gets a medal. And I definitely didn't grow up in that time. But um, I, I recognize it now and I, I recognize it in not all obviously you can't blanket everybody but i do recognize that pattern and i can see where it comes from and why people say it so um that could be feeding into the kind of selfie narcissist thing as well i don't know but anyway don't all narcissists secretly hate themselves and isn't that really <laughs> the underlying issue anyway <laughs> okay um let me pick up the last pick of the week and uh that is i wanted to introduce a photographer to you um German photographer F.C. Gundlach, G-U-N-D-L-A-C-H, um, who I would say back in the 50s and 60s, he brought pop art to Germany. And he is still alive. He just had his 90th birthday. So that, that's why he was uh, in the news a bit here. And uh, if you want to learn a bit about the, um, the visual sensitivities of Germans, uh, the stuff that for example, I grew up with, um, then looking at his photography is a very good idea because he really shaped the visual landscape of the 50s and 60s here in Germany, big time, even later. Um, the way he composes, the way he uses contrast, the way he uses geometries in his photos, um, he really changed the whole playing field. And um, I really dig his photography. Not sure if it's because I grew up with it, but um, I think it has certainly informed my tastes. So I think we should do a show on 
German Expressionism and <laughs> its influence on noir, American noir, black and white, and uh, the whole sensibility. That would be interesting. It's fascinating. Yeah. I think so, yeah. That would be interesting. All right. So that's it for this episode of the Future of Photography. Again, um, we have a Discord. The address is here on the left, tfttf.com slash join tfop. And uh, we'll be happy to welcome you there. We're also on Twitter at TFOP now. We are on Insta at TFOP now. And we have, of course, a website where you can find all previous episodes of this. And that is at thefutureofphotography.com. Um, yeah, let's discuss on the Discord. Until then, <laughs> take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.